Hey everyone, how you doing? Ron here with Tech Tips to Go. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about master nodes. Uh, I get this question a lot, so I'm gonna kind of disclose how I make anywhere from ten thousand to fourteen thousand dollars a month, depending on the price, passively with hardly doing any work. I, I honestly, you know, I think I probably looked at my validators and my nodes probably about two minutes last month, or not even. So let's get into the video. Hey, before we get into the video, if you could do me a favor, click on that little subscribe button. It helps with the algorithm. Also, just a little notification. I do have a free course that has a lot of the tutorials. It has a beginner's course that is completely 100% free. It teaches about Ethereum, Bitcoin, but a lot of people like this course because they see and they can learn a lot of the over-the-shoulder lessons and how-tos. You can see I've got VeChain, transferring coins, sharing, how to buy a sharing, how to use MetaMask my ethereum wallet uniswap as well as we talk about cryptocurrency wallets and how to as well as we have a section called hidden gems so again please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you want access to the free course just come over to the top here learn.techtips2go.com and click on the free course and let's get into the video all right, so we're going to be talking about uh, validators and masternodes. I get the question a lot. We're not going to be talking about sharing masternodes. I, I hold many different types of masternodes, and I've held many different types of validators, masternodes, X nodes, theta nodes, uh, guardian nodes, all that stuff. So I'm going to go just over the basics. I'm not going to get into exactly how I'm making ten to fourteen thousand dollars a month, but it'll kind of give you an idea what's possible, and especially if you get in early in cryptocurrency. Uh, you know, anything is possible, especially with staking. You know, when you look at someone's portfolio, I've looked at many, many portfolios over the last six to eight months. Uh, shout out to Big O, Owen out there. So I remember working with Owen. Uh, I'm not going to disclose his uh, his earnings. Well, actually, this is another person's. So this person um, came came to me and, you know, he showed me his portfolio and we did a review uh, I did. I made some recommendations. We started off with fifteen thousand, and now he's at ninety-five thousand. And this was less than six months. But anything is possible with staking, right? And now he's making passive income off of that ninety thousand, which is great. So let's get into master nodes validators. So the first question is, you know, people are asking, you know, one of the main questions that I get is, you know, how difficult is it to run? So let's first explain what a master node is. So. I took this off a forgot what site. I'll leave a link in the description below. So uh, a master node, you know, are full or part nodes that incentivize node operators. So a node operator could be myself that decides to or gets rewarded a master node or buys a master node or wins a master node or sets up a master node within a company. So a node operates to, to perform the consensus functions of running a blockchain. So if you're familiar with uh, blockchain technology, picture a bunch of mini PCs, whether they're hosted or whether you're in your, they're in your basement, whether they're in your office, they're all around the world or in a, you know, they could be anywhere. It could be physically in your house, could be uh, hosted on a platform like Amazon, Vulture, uh, wherever, you name it. So a node sometimes called a light node, a regular node is the most basic type of computing device that supports the blockchain network. In a general sense, a decentralized blockchain network is simply composed of all nodes that support it. So when they talk about a decentralized environment, uh, let's just come over to AW app. So these are all nodes. Uh, and then let's just draw some lines like, you know, they might talk to each other. They, they, they might talk to one master ledger over here that performs the majority of the function, functions. But the main goal is to have everything decentralized meaning you know they could be all around the world they're all helping with securing the network and validating transactions so when i talk about you know a decentralized blockchain network just picture this where you actually have you know a bunch of non-centralized like meaning not owned by one company but it's owned by individuals or multiple organizations or different people around the world that help secure the network and validate and process transactions on different lands, different IPs, different virtual networks, hosting, cloud provisor, etc. And basically, like I said, if you're familiar, if you, like from back in the day, Bitcoin is proof of work. So all of these need a lot of electrical power. You know, if you have a decentralized network like Bitcoin, it takes a lot of power, right? When you have proof of work, proof of work 
or sorry, proof of stake, it's a little different, right? Because you could host these things anywhere. You could get hosting plans that are, you know, more cost effective. You know, it's a lot cheaper. Or so if you're a techie and you know about computers and networks and IP addresses and latency and uptime, then masternodes is something that you could pick up very fast. There's a lot of masternodes out there that you can kind of get started, play around with. It's just a matter of finding the balance of the return on investment. And I'm going to show you some sites that I looked at before. So over here, you know, like I said, it helps with secure with security and securing the network, validates transactions on the network. And so the next question that I get is, what is required for setting up a masternode? So every company is different. You know, some masternodes will require you that you have 1 million tokens of whatever. Uh, you might need 4 million or you need 6 million. You might need to be selected by the team or you might need to just purchase it outright, right? And especially if you get into like Dash are the ones who kind of really were the starters of masternodes. Uh, when you were able to buy a Dash masternode and you were able to get in early, it was almost nothing to purchase. Then it became like the cream of the crop masternodes because you were getting paid um, thousands and thousands of dollars just for hosting one masternode. And then in the bear market, things went down and you're only getting paid about $400 or maybe even less a month. But um, that those are Dash masternodes. And there's a lot of websites out there that I'm going to get into and show you the return on investment, what you can make. And then I'm going to go into um, kind of how I host these things not going to say exactly where I host. Uh, I've got different accounts with uh, different cloud hosting providers that um, we'll get into. So what's required, like I said, you're going to need a hosting plan, whether it's Vulture, whether it's Amazon, AWS. Uh, there's a bunch of sites that you can do this with. And what are the returns? So let's get into returns and websites that I found. So this website is called Masternodes Online. And... If you look at this, the number one right now, the return on investment, not return on investment, but you can get a Dash masternode. Uh, so this shows you the token price of each Dash mas each Dash token. And you're going to require 1,000 Dash. So the price is 1,000 Dash times $214, which is 200 and 214,000. I actually bought a Dash masternode. I think in the bear market when it went to 69 or $70. So it was about $70 at the time. Now, as the price of Dash goes up, um, now it's 214000 So the return wasn't that great. It's not so great. You know, it's it's about 5%. You know, we talk about VeChain masternodes, uh, X nodes. Right now, they're about 4%. And it's not that much because you don't even, in a lot of the staking platforms, people are giving you like 20%, 15%. Um, and those are nice rewards, you know, just for doing nothing. You don't even have to worry about securing an hour, hosting fees, making sure you have uptime, making sure you're actually upgrading, uh, your node and the security and et cetera. And especially with yield farming, uh, sometimes you kind of have to ask yourself, you know, is hosting a master node worth your time? Because you always have that in the back of your head because people are going to be staking on your master node and you need that up 24 seven, is it worth it? Right? So those are some of the things you have to kind of balance and figure out if, if, you know, running a master node is for you. So we can go over here by the ROI and you can look at all of these master nodes and take a look and say, Hey, is it worth getting into any of these master nodes? Right? So take a look at that. You can look at Omega, you can look at all of these coins, but you look at the ROI, the percentage, and you also look at, you know, is this token or is this company going to be around for a while, right? And uh, you just never know. So here are my some of my masternodes. Uh, like I said, I use four different platforms for hosting my masternodes. So here's one of them, which is Vulture. I use, also use Amazon AWS. And you can see the cost. So the charges per month is about $5, 350 350 uh, 40 50 40 And you can see the status that they're running. Now, how do you go and actually deploy a masternode? So when you go to deploy a masternode, you could come over to something like, uh, like a, a site like Vulture right, or any type of cloud hosting. And you can click over here on the top, right, and you can click on deploy a new server. So like I said, every company has different requirements and usually they'll kind of set some instructions to say, okay, well, 
you should you know your requirements should be on a linux server now should you know linux i think you should know not even the basics i think you should know a little bit more uh, as long as you're kind of willing to learn linux isn't that hard like command line like cli like it, like i'm a, a techie so i used to be like a unix linux administrator for red hat and windows networks probably about like 15 to 18 years ago so you know i'm familiar with it and i'm not so familiar because i kind of got out of that game maybe about uh, 10 years ago but it's like riding on a bike once you know the linux commands um it's not that hard so the first thing you need to do is you need to deploy an instance so you select what kind of frequency bare metal dedicated cloud computing you select a server location and then you go through uh the os you know you need a 32-bit operating system a 64-bit now what kind of operating system software do you need do you need windows do you need linux do you need openbsd fedora uh, FreeBSD, right? So these are different types of platforms that you can host your master nodes on, right? Then we talk about how much memory, and usually you're going to get some specs from um, from a company that I'll say, hey, well, you know, we require about you know four CPUs, four cores, X amount of memory, and X amount of bandwidth, and then and then you could come over here, uh, you can enable IPv6. So when it, when you talk about like IPv4, IPv6, that's just about like your subnet basically addressing, so IP address. And then we talk about backups and then your startup script. So basically your startup script is like when you reboot, do you want certain things to start up automatically and you could create like a shell script on that. But, you know, that's a little bit more advanced. And then we talk about SSH keys. Basically, if when you do a login, are you just going to log in normally or are you going to log in through a secure shell, which is SSH? Uh, then you give your, your server host name, label it, and you deploy it. And then this can deploy it within minutes and within seconds. All right, so I'm going to get into a little example of getting into a node. So you can kind of look to see what I do. So I'm doing this for my Mac. And you can figure out, you know, is this for you or not? So what you want to do is um, within Mac, you should know a couple of things. You need to do some file transfers. Uh, you need to know directories and file structures and how to run certain commands. So from a terminal or from a Mac, what you want to do is you want to do command and space. And that is going to open up a spotlight and you can just type in terminal. So now that we have terminal open, I'm going to come back to my Vulture. So on my Vulture, I actually have Gala. I have, a, I have a Gala node here that's hosted in Chicago. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy this IP. And what you're going to do is you're just going to do an SSH root and then space that IP address. And it's going to ask you for that password. So you can come over here, copy that password, enter that password. And now you're in. So you can see some of these functions that I can perform. So... Uh, you know what, to be honest, I, I want to show you the stats on this. If it actually shows the last time I logged in. So look at this. Um, this is how past it is. Look, the last time I logged in was February 4th. So um, with probably about eight of my nodes, I haven't logged in since February 4th, so that is almost two months. And like I said, some of these nodes, they make anywhere from 10,000 to 14,000 Canadian. Um, on the high side, I would say about 12,000 US, maybe like 14,000 a month. But look at the last login that I had Thursday, February 4th, right, uh, from this IP address. And to set this up, it, it, was, a, it was a piece of cake. And uh, my brother actually got one. And I showed him how to set everything up. But what you want to do is when you're getting into a node, you could look at some of the commands that I ran. So I needed to upgrade the security of it. So I did an app get update, um, wget. And, and these were pretty straightforward to actually download the file. So this was actually a wget, meaning I'm going to get, a, I'm going to get the the shell or the script from a secure site and i'm going to download it and then what i'm going to do is the chmod give me some uh, commands that i could actually run the setup file 
and then and then look at the status of it. So when you're looking at directory structures like a Windows file or a folder, what you want to do is an LS. So when you do an LS, it actually tells you what's in that directory, right? So if you do a PWD, that's going to tell you where you are, meaning where am I in this root structure? Am I in the root or do I need to be in somewhere else, right? So if you do an LS slash AL dash AL, it actually gives you more information of the read, the write, the directory, and you can look at everything else, right? Um, what's in the root or do I need to be somewhere else and look for a specific file that I need to run it on. And if you want to get into a directory or something else, you can do CD splat backslash and then uh, directory if you wanted to. And then if you wanted to get back, you just go CD backslash. Uh, I kind of get this mixed up with DOS when you're doing like command line with DOS, right? So you could do uh, an LS dash AL, right? ls dash al or ls dash a and it'll actually tell you what's what's in here right and then if you want to go to into root you can just go cd you know roots or cd backspace print working directory and it actually shows me that i you know i'm in the in, in this directory right so it shows me and then if you want to get back into root you know do a printing working directory now i'm in roots um, and then you could also look at the histories, right, uh, of what you want to do. But running a master node is not as difficult. It just really depends um, on every company, right? Some some companies might need you to run a lot of scripts or updates, etc. But from this node that I'm operating on, Gala, and some of my other nodes, um, doesn't take a lot of time. So. So what are the returns? Let's get back to that. I know a lot of you guys are wondering about the pricing, but like I said, the key to getting into master nodes, and that's why like when I do my research on companies that I want to invest to, one of the first things I look at is, is there staking? Okay, if they're staking, then that means they might be running some kind of uh, proof of proof of stake kind of master node staking reward system or you know for example with polka dot and the web3 foundation they run kusama uh, kusama validators right they run nominated proof of stake where uh, operators need to nominate for proof of staking to get rewards right so it's a little different it's called nominated proof of stake in the web3 foundation or in polka dot in the polka dot world or the kusama world so it's a little different it's not proof of stake it's nominated proof of stake where you need to be a nominee as a staker to nominate on a validator so it's very different um now what are the returns it's re you know like i said you need to get in early into these cryptocurrency coins and make sure that they have a future and take a chance to to think that okay well maybe if i invest into this company early i think they're going to be doing something i think they have a bright future if i get in early then i could get a master node for cheap because of the token price might be a, like really low let's say it's a penny and you only need a hundred thousand tokens then you get in into that coin before it goes to a dollar or 50 cents or whatever the number might be allows you to bag enough coins because you might need a hundred thousand tokens or coins to operate a validator right so do you see what i'm saying if you get early into a, a specific coin you can start running a, val a validator or a master node or an x node for example like i had a thunder x node i was able to bag v chain at an early early price and i needed six point uh, five point six million vet to run a thunder x node then I needed to buy one. And because I had a lot of extra VeChain VET, I was able to buy that on the market for cheap. Then when I got into Theta, um, you know, I got in very early, right? I'm talking about like 20 cents. I got in early at 20 cents for Theta and I was able to run a Guardian node or an Edge node, right, for very cheap. But now if you want to run those nodes, it's going to cost you, well, before the program was like 10,000 um, Theta, to run a guardian node so ten thousand times thirteen dollars that's like a hundred and thirty thousand right it's it's something pretty crazy but now they've reduced it to a thousand theta to run an edge node so it's a lot cheaper now i think it's like ten to fifteen thousand but it's still a little bit pricey but the main thing is is you want to get early you want to look at projects that have staking that might have like some kind of nominated proof of stake or proof of stake um, system that will allow you to collect tokens and 
meet the requirements to become a future validator network. The same thing like Cardi Chain. So Cardi Chain has validators, right? If you got in early and you contributed to the network, uh, then you had the possibility of maybe getting onto a validator or being a validator if you were accepted by the team, I think. So so those are a lot of the questions that uh, people have. You know, what is it required to, to set up a master node? What are the returns? The returns... Like I said, um, one validator that I have might give me like a thousand to fourteen hundred dollars a month, whereas some other ones, like uh, V Chain X Node, the setup is a lot different. Um, it, it's very easy on a Thunder X Node. You do it within the V Chain ecosystem, and a Thunder X Node I think gives about twenty twenty four or twenty two hundred a month US dollars, and. Uh, Aside from sharing master nodes, it's I'm just talking about uh, different nodes, but uh, Theta is a little different, and there's other there's a ton of nodes out there. It's just a matter of you picking them and doing your homework to see if this company is going to be around. Um, is it worth getting a master node? Because you don't want to make an investment, spend your time, uh, whereas you could just just stake and do nothing and get a high percentage return. Because if the return isn't worth it. My thoughts on it is you just may as well yield farm. You may as well yield farm and stake it. Like when I think about polka dot staking, like you can stake on Kraken or you can stake it on like a yield farm or you could stake it on chain on the polka dot network. But the thing is with polka dot network, it's not so passive. Whereas if you stake it on Kraken, it's very passive because you can do it within clicks. You don't have to worry about your validators being oversubscribed. You don't have to worry about your validators being slashed. So you have to constantly check when you're staking on chain on, on Polkadot and Kusama. But when you do it on Kraken, Kraken takes care of all of that. You do it within three clicks, set and forget, right? And a lot of people like that. So uh, master nodes are not for everyone. You, like I said, you really have to do your homework and see if the returns are worth it. But anyways, that's it for... Um, the video, I'll probably follow up with a video on exactly how I'm making the ten to 14000 a month. But that kind of gives you an idea of the possible rewards when it comes to cryptocurrency. And, it, and it's it's crazy to think that not a lot of not a lot of people are in cryptocurrency, right? Because with when you're in cryptocurrency and once your portfolio starts hitting six figures and seven figures, you you kind of see how much you're making passively a month and it kind of blows uh, people's minds away and they're like you could really make that much you could actually cash out it's like yeah you could use bitcoin atm machines you could use gift cards you can deposit it back into your bank and uh, it's no problem so anyways that's it for the video hope you enjoy it like i said like i always say please comment subscribe like and i'll see you in the next one